You know already, it is not just kids Tylenol or Advil that is almost impossible to get your hands on right now. Health Canada reporting there are 800 drugs in short supply, 23 of which are considered at critically low levels. How did we get in this situation? And more importantly, how do we get out of it? For more on that, we turn to Jen Belcher with the Ontario Pharmacists Association. And Jen, what are some of the common names of affected drugs that people might recognize and be in need of? Right now, we're really seeing some shortages of children's antibiotics in liquid form. So commonly used antibiotics for things like chest infections, ear infections, um, drug names you might recognize like amoxicillin or azithromycin. Uh, so that's been a real challenge for parents, especially as they navigate the respiratory virus season with very few options for pain medication to treat fever and body aches. Not that those antibiotics treat the virus, but they treat some of the secondary infections that are more likely to happen afterwards. We've asked this a question a lot, but I'm going to ask it again. Is it an ingredient shortage? Is it supply chain issues? Is it just not ordering enough? What happened? So we've actually been experiencing larger than normal drug shortages for quite some time. Um, with the over-the-counter drug shortages, this is just one of the first times it's been quite so visible. Pharmacy teams have been managing these for years, um, but it has gotten much worse over the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, but really over the past five to 10 years, we've seen more of this. It's a combination of complex issues. Sometimes it's demand, like we saw with the children's pain medication. Uh, it was a three to four times spike over previous all-time highs starting in the summer, which is an abnormal time of year for this to happen. So um, sometimes it's really high demand. Sometimes it is uh, interruptions to the supply chain, whether it be the shortage of raw ingredients that are manufactured worldwide, whether it's manufacturing disruptions uh, domestically here within Canada or internationally at some of the plants. Um, but there are a lot of different factors that influence the drug shortages, and it's really important that we uh, prioritize this moving forward, given how challenging it's been. How do pharmacies order their drugs? Because we knew, I mean, ever since the summer, doctors have been telling us, get ready, it's going to be a really intense cold and flu season. So when we're ordering supply to pharmacies, how far in advance does that happen? So pharmacies order their medications that we keep on the shelves from what are called pharmacy wholesalers. Um, they're warehouses that hold a bunch of different products, and so we can order typically from one place. It makes it much easier to manage and um, to receive. So in those cases, we often get uh, orders delivered the next day, uh, sometimes not over the weekend, so it may be a, a couple days, but usually next business day, we're able to get our delivery. Um, what happens is manufacturers supply those wholesalers and uh, what they do is they forecast how much drug they need to produce, they source ingredients, they ramp up production, all of that takes time, um, and then they distribute them to the wholesalers, and we purchase them from the wholesalers. 23 drugs are considered critically low, which means a shortage could pose a serious risk to people's health and to the healthcare system. Who could be affected? It could be a wide variety of people. Um, a lot of the drugs that we see, are, see on the tier three shortages, which is what you're talking about here, where we have um, very few or no alternative therapies or medications to use in place of those drugs. Uh, many of them are used in a more of a hospital setting. So a common one we see is a drug called amiodarone in injectable form. It's often used in cardiac conditions to stabilize heart rhythm. Um, and they can be very high acuity drugs and um, we see some antibiotics that uh, have a very specific place in therapy on that list as well too. Some eye drops that are commonly used after things like glaucoma surgeries. And when we see that number there with very few options, it becomes very challenging to manage if we don't have alternative therapies or ways to manage people's uh, symptoms or condition. Jen, what is the fix for this? Ultimately, uh, there, because it's such a complex issue, we need to take a look at what is going on and why we're in this situation and what can be done to mitigate against this in, in the future. And this is going to require the input of a large number of stakeholders that have um, unique perspectives and expertise on the issue. Uh, I would say as a pharmacist, it's really important that we start including pharmacists and pharmacy teams in those discussions because typically... Uh, usually the more the manufacturing and the industry side um, and not necessarily the frontline health practitioners that get to participate in those conversations. Um, but definitely a call moving forward to look at how we price our drugs, um, how we incentivize domestic manufacturing and uh, international manufacturers to bring their products to the Canadian market, as well as what we do to safeguard uh, all elements of the supply chain and the jobs that are here within Canada. Jen, thanks for your time this morning. Thanks for having me. 
thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.